but this is fascinating. And basically they're talking about gluten having a major impact on the gut bacteria and creating a dysbiosis. And we know with dysbiosis that that can affect the whole neuroendocrine, HPA access cascade of things. And they talked about dietary gluten had effects on the streptococcus family, the lactobacillus family, the choreobacteria family. Um, really, really, really interesting in how it affects different things. It downregulated uh, the gut's absorption in, in a lot of different ways, created inflammation. So there's a lot of different p potential cascades that happen when gluten comes into the equation. So the low-hanging fruit that we talk about is kind of getting patients on a paleo tablet, which is a grain-free, gr uh, grain-free, dairy-free, legume-free template. And then potentially even moving towards a paleo template where we're going grain free, legume free, dairy free, no nuts, seeds, nightshades, and eggs. Yeah, you may have and to go the autoimmune. So here's the the point that we're trying to make is that the people who say, Oh, I, I eat gluten and I feel fine, it's not about whether you feel fine, it's about that internal biochemistry that's changing. It's about those microbes that are changing. Also in that study that you just sent me here, it was talking about Prevotella being affected too. We know there's a huge link between Prevotella and joint pain. We did a whole podcast on joint pain, you know, functional medicine. And so it's not that like, Hey, you have to get a rash or you have to break out an acne after you eat gluten. That's not, it's a lot more subtle, but the subtle changes over time change the whole system. And there's a lot of people out there that I hear, I won't mention their names, but their podcasts out there that say, hey, you know, you can have gluten if you have it and you don't have any symptoms, you know, you're fine. The problem is the inflammation that's happening here may not create a symptom. There may be a delay in the symptoms that occur. And that, that's kind of the myopic level of thinking. You can't just, you can't go to that conclusion. Well, if you don't have symptoms, you're fine. In this one study, they're looking at inflammation associated with the microRNA. So they're looking at inflammation at the RNA level. I mean, that is a very myopic level, very, very uh, microscopic level, I should say. And in this study, they had some people on a gluten-free diet and some eating gluten. And they saw on the gluten diet, they saw this increase in inflammation at the microRNA level, which is pretty profound. So it, it may take time to manifest into actual symptoms. And we know there's data on the fact that there are people that even if they aren't celiac or even really gluten sensitive symptomatically, they still saw permeability with their gut when exposed to gluten. So kind of my general recommendation is try to be grain free all the time, especially if you have an autoimmune condition. And if you're going to cheat, try to choose a gluten free cheat if you can. Now, if you don't have a known autoimmunity, then maybe you choose a little bit of gluten here or there, but be very careful with it. Try to do things like extra enzymes, um, extra enzymes with DPP-4, maybe some extra activated charcoal and glutathione to kind of deal with the stress and um, the inflammation associated with that. You can also add in some extra glutamine and things to help with the gut lining. So these are some ways that we can mitigate it. So I kind of, I tier things, hey, known autoimmunity, no gluten ever. And if you're going to cheat, try to make sure it's gluten-free. If you're relatively healthy and no autoimmunity, then maybe you cheat a little bit with gluten, but try to make it a special occasion, holidays, birthday, et cetera, and then try to use things to blunt the negative consequences that may occur. Yeah, well said. People aren't even aware of that, that we have some little cheats in our pocket, especially that we'll give to people around the holiday season, different enzyme formulations that can actually sort of break up or reduce the effect of some of those food allergens, like your dairy, your corn, your egg, your soy, you, you know, you can use enzymes to help break those apart. But we don't want people to get hooked on those or use that as a long term solution, because then you're still cheating. And it's not going to be reducing the the impact 100%. It's just going to blunt it, as you said.